Um, so back uh, when you're getting going, you're, you're seven years before you're in editing and you knew you wanted to be an editor. Um, so for anybody that's that's in publishing uh, that's listening to this, which I assume is a, a pretty large uh, portion of the audience, uh, and they're thinking, I want to be Molly O'Neill. How do I get there? How for those seven years where you're you're in the book industry, you're not you know you're not waiting tables and hoping to one day get there, but you're not doing what you want to do. How did you keep from getting bitter? How did you keep going, especially when 2008 happens and it seems like the whole world is going to fall apart and we're all going to be in bread lines, uh, and so there's no point in, in, in worrying maybe about anything business wise. Uh, how did you keep going and persevere through that? Um, that's a good question. You know, I think, and and so I teach a, at a course for the last couple summers I've done this. Um, I, I teach at Columbia's publishing course. So that's a six weeks intensive course for mostly fairly recent college grads. Um, I would say primarily folks in their 20s or maybe early 30s at the most who've decided they want to work in the book publishing industry or in magazine publishing um, or web publishing. It kind of covers a, a couple different areas. Um, and so I go and, and am on faculty for the book portion of it. And one of the things that I regularly tell the students there or, um, you know, give as advice to people in informational interviews, things like that, is that there's stuff to learn at every role, you know, um, you can learn a ton about being an editor, even if you're not an editor, you can learn a ton about um, business communication, you can, and in a way you can learn it with a little bit less emotion involved, a little bit more remove. Uh, publishing is mostly a written industry. So if you want to follow along and you're already working like under a boss, um, you can you can see their emails, you can see records of the editorial letters, you can kind of trace the path of how this happens. And in fact, one of one of the better um, pieces of wisdom I've collected along the way was I, I had myself an interview, more of just an informational conversation. It wasn't really an interview because she didn't have a position open with uh, an editor who I regard really highly, Wendy Lamb, when I was trying to move into um, the editorial side of things. And I was asking her, you know, at that point, I had a good few years in as a marketing um, person. And so I was asking, you know, like, do you think I can skip some steps? Do I have to go all the way back <laughs> to like the beginning? You know, really don't, don't collect go, or don't pass go, don't collect $200, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> And what she said is to be an editor, you have to walk in the pencil marks of another editor for a very long time, um, which I think is just so beautifully articulated. But editing and, and really all of publishing in a very different way than a lot of other industries is an apprenticeship based industry. And you can go to one of the publishing courses like the one that I help at at Columbia, or there's one in Denver, there's a couple others, um, and it's a jump start. But in terms of learning how to do the actual work every day of the publishing industry, the only way you learn that is on the job. Um, and by just being interested and curious about everything, by taking on extra tasks so you can figure out what they're all about, or because they allow you to get FaceTime with someone you know, higher up who you might not otherwise have an opportunity to have a conversation with. Um, and, and really that same sort of curiosity and openness is the same thing you need to become an editor who's looking for talent everywhere or an agent who's looking for talent everywhere. It's just kind of like your antenna's always up. Um, I, I once heard my former boss, Brenda Bowen, described by someone very aptly as she said, you know, like she acquires books, but she also acquires people. Um, <laughs> and I thought that was a really uh, a good summation. Um, and I, I think that's part of what actually we're doing as an industry is, is uh, we're, we're collecting and giving voice to interesting people who have interesting ideas or stories to tell, particularly the ones that haven't been heard enough or prominently um, before and and were amplifying them and giving giving them an opportunity to speak. Makes sense to me. So it's uh, just kind of 
at any stage in the career, try and be the best possible version of that person you can be because it's a small industry and people are watching. Am I hearing that right? Yeah, and, and you can be learning um, at, at any given moment. You, you never learn everything there is to learn in publishing. You know, you never ascend totally to the to the top. Every book is its own puzzle. Oh, I assume after you're the editor for Divergent, you've ascended. You're there. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I assume um, that's your resume now. You just walk into places, <laughs> Divergent, done. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think it's that simple, but I also wouldn't want it to be that simple. You know, there would be something um, sad if I only focused on this thing that I did, you know, early in my career, like I intend to have a career that lasts for decades, everything to focus on something that I did you know, six, seven years in, um, I won't say by accident, because it, it was it was very intentional. But, um, you know, I look at that, and I think it was amazing. But it was also hopefully just me getting started. And, you know, and I sometimes joke to people, I mean, I, I have a lot of affection and admiration for that series and what it was and and who the author has become. Um, but I, I, in a way, as an editor, accident. What I really was trying to do was like find the next Newberry winner or Caldecott winner, you know. So it's like there's always. In fact, I I just had an editor lunch with someone who. Um, showed me, I thought she was just casually using this term, but then she pulled it up on her phone and showed me that she has a personal editor bingo of like things that she really wants to accomplish or have happen for her books. And, you know, basically it's like, if all of these things happen for um, books of mine, then like I too will have gotten to experience a lot of different things. So a whole variety of things, you know, from like bestsellers and awards to, you know, wanting uh, a book turned into a movie or wanting a book that, um, you know, there's a, a special edition made for, you know, there's a whole list of things, but it was, it was kind of delightful. And I think most people in publishing have high ambition like that um, to, to keep learning and to keep growing. I think one of the other really good pieces of advice I got along the way in my career was from Maria Madunio, who's a brilliant editor, mostly of picture books at Random House. And, but she worked at Harper when I worked at Harper. And um, sometimes I would go to her, I didn't work directly under her, but we had built up a rapport. And so sometimes I would go to her and ask for her wisdom, her advice. And it was when I was thinking about moving to the editorial position, in fact. And um, I asked her, you know, I'm, I'm seven years in, if I put in a couple more years, like I have a pretty swanky title, what are people going to think of me if I back up and like, you know, have an assistant title all over again? Like, what are, what are people going to perceive from that? And does it matter? And she said, you know, in this business, it's small. It's, we joke, it's incestuous. Everyone moves around all the time and you're doing good. If you can remember like, wait, where's that person now? And what you remember about them is the kind of books they make, and the authors that are associated with them along the journey, no one remembers anyone's actual title on their business card. And so her advice to me was make your name your title, um, which is advice that I have both carried with me and given away to a lot of other people because when you recalibrate things as, um, you know, what are the projects that I, and, and the authors and the ideas that, I want to have associated with me, that's a different question than just, will this book sell? Um, and so it's not the only thing certainly that I think about, but it is one thing that I think about is if you look at, you know, um, the books that are associated with me, what, what picture does that paint? And it's something that I think about as I'm taking on clients, as I'm signing up things, as I'm, I'm deciding what, projects to focus on. 